three, two, one. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Facilities Planning Committee. My name is Victoria Young, and uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. At 1700 on the dot. Uh, please join me in acknowledging we are unlearning and relearning on the traditional and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. This meeting is being live streamed and the audio and visual recordings will be available to public for viewing after the meeting. Footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. The board has a strong commitment to ethical conduct. This includes the responsibility of committee members conduct themselves with appropriate decorum and professionalism. As chair of the committee it is my responsibility to see that decorum is maintained. Following presentations, information items, there will be an opportunity to ask questions for clarification for clarification purposes. I ask trustee members, stakeholder reps to keep comments uh, to the content that's in the presentation. Before we begin, I will go around the room and ask um, everyone to introduce themselves for a roll call starting to my left, please. Uh, David Green, Secretary Treasurer. Justin Chapman with Trades. Lois Champedley, Trustee and Committee Member. Vic Kanna, Vancouver District Parent Advisory Council. Suzette Magri, QP15. My apologies. Terry Stanley, Vancouver Secondary Teachers. Ella Bonvillain, VDSC Facilities Rep. Jennifer Reddy, Trustee. Uh, Josh Sang, Trustee and Committee Member. Alpha Chin, Trustee and Committee Member. Tim Chester, Operating Engineers. Sarah Dash, BEPFA. Kelly Eagleson, BASA. Danielle Durant, Vancouver Elementary and Adult Educator Society. Susie Ma, trustee. Christopher Richardson, trustee. Ron McDonald, director of facilities. Helen McGregor, superintendent. Anna, recorder. John Dawson, director of educational planning. David Nelson, deputy superintendent. Shazad Samji, Assistant Secretary Treasurer. Janet Fraser, Trustee. Gianna Chow, Communications Manager. Ajaz Hassan, representing PASA. Thank you. We have a full house tonight. Great to see everyone. Uh, we'll now move to <clears throat> agenda section one. Under items for approval, we have capital bylaw number. Uh, 2023-24 CPS D39-01. Secretary Treasurer David Green will present. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. If we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, there's a report in your agenda package. Um, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but I do want to point out that the um, the district received the capital plan response letter from the ministry with respect to the 2023-2024 five-year capital plan submission on March the 9th. And it does contain approvals for major capital, minor capital and playground upgrade projects. It also includes the annual programs funding agreement that has to be signed. And also a the indication that a capital bylaw is required under the school act to adopt the approved capital plan. Next slide, please. Um, with respect to major capital projects, in, as indicated in the report, there's approval giving, given to um, complete a project definition report for a six classroom addition to Henry Hudson Elementary School that's currently undergoing seismic upgrade, which is a replacement school project. And there are two projects from previous years that are still being supported by the ministry, Olympic Village School, Elementary School, 
the concept plan is with the ministry for approval and the next stage in that process would be the completion of a project definition report and there is a chart in the um, a chart in the uh, report uh, that, which outlines the steps that you go through to get a capital project approved by the ministry. Uh, the second project is the Wilford Grenfell Elementary School. It's a seismic upgrade project. The PDR has been submitted to the ministry and it's, it's with the ministry now for funding approval. Next slide, please. <coughs> so in the minor capital um, program, uh, there's there's two major minor capital programs. One is the school enhancement program. And um, <coughs> last year we submitted, um, we were allowed to submit um, <coughs> five, five projects in this category. Uh, they relate to projects such as roofing, um, wall systems, interior construction, HVAC, electrical, plumbing upgrades. And we submitted um, five last year and we, we received approval for these four. So uh, electrical upgrades at Prince of Wales for the fire alarm upgrade, um, <clears throat> public address upgrade at Point Grey, the Vantech uh, shop wing skylights removal and building roofing, and the exterior wall system at, um, at Vantech. The project that did not get support, it was the um, exterior wall system uh, elementary roll sh roller shutters for Cook Elementary. So the next slide, please. <clears throat> Again, we, we were allowed to submit five, uh, five projects under the Carbon Neutral Capital Program. And the only one that got approved was the um, new heating plant for McGee. <clears throat> And as indicated in the report, there was a heating plant uh, submission for University Hill, uh, Wolf Elementary, Cavell Elementary. Neither, none of those were approved. And also a controls upgrade for Killarney Secondary was not approved. Sec next slide, please. Um, we did submit three, three projects for uh, playground equipment <clears throat> under the playground equipment program, uh, one for Cunningham, Cook and Trudeau, and they're all uh, new accessibility playground equipment, um, including rubber surfacing for students with accessibility needs. So we um, <clears throat> we have not announced which one. We did get approval for one of these projects, um, that ministry's request. We have not disclosed what that is um, because the directed by the ministry to wait for a public announcement about playground equipment that for the, for the entire province. So that's coming. You'll see in your report in the attached funding agreement, in the in the attached capital plan response letter, it's been left blank. And also in the uh, annual programs funding agreement. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the recommendation in the report is that the uh, Board of Education adopt, that the committee would be recommending that the board adopt the school district Number 39, Vancouver Capital Bylaw, number 23 slash 24, CPSD 3901, by having three readings of the bylaw at the April 11, 2023 public board meeting. And if you go to the next slide, this would be the, um, <clears throat> this would be the um, motions that would be on the 11th um, board meeting next week. So basically that the capital bylaw be read a first time, a second time, and then with the approval of the uh, unanimous approval of the trustees at the committee at the board table to have the third reading at the same night and then the third reading and finally adoption of the bylaw. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Secretary Treasurer David Green. Are there any questions related to this presentation? Uh, please, Deepak Vic Khanna, go ahead. Um, thank you. Through the chair, um, we will email some more detailed questions over. Um, but for now, I just wanted to ask if it's it would be um, on the agenda or on, on focus to reflect on what we submitted in June and then what we got back in terms of major projects. Was there anything that was not, um, you know, was there any response to any of the other things that we wanted that we did not get? 
I will refer this to Ron. Thanks. Through the chair, the capital response letter is provided in the package and it indicates the ministry's approval. They don't, they don't comment on projects that were on our capital plan that have not yet uh, advanced. Through the chair, so I, um, if we had like David Thompson, was that on our plan and there was no feedback from the ministry is what we're saying? Madam Chair, uh, last year, uh, David Thompson was uh, 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 deferred in, a, in being a supported project. So it's back on our capital plan. It was a year one capital plan request. Any clarification there? You're great. Uh, further questions? There are no further questions or comments. Uh, Directive facilities, um, Ron, go ahead. Madam Chair, if I could, uh, if I could correct a typographical thing, we've made a um, a mistake in the transcription from the capital response letter into the staff report, and I'd just like to highlight on the uh, school enhancement program, the uh, Cook Roll Shutters project is an approved uh, is approved. And the second Van Tech upgrade project was an, an, a not improved for an exterior envelope. And I don't know if there's some confusion in reading the report. Or, or it might be actually the, uh, the report is correct. There was an error on this PowerPoint slide. I apologize. So we, we can correct that PowerPoint slide to match the report and the capital response letter. Just to confirm that was for Cook? The roller yes, the Cook shutters. was approved and the uh, second, the second uh, Van Tech project was not approved at that time. The, the, the report is uh, correct. The uh, PowerPoint slide had a transcription error there. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ron. Uh, moving on, uh, I'm prepared to proceed uh, and look to committee trustees on whether they'd like to recommend this motion to the board for the April 11th meeting. The motion reads that the Board of Education adopt the school district number 39 Vancouver capital bylaw number 2023-24 CPSD 39-01 by having three readings of the bylaw at April 11th, 2023 public board meeting. Uh, Trustee Chan Pedley. Um, thanks, Chair. I uh, support the motion moving forward. It's too bad we don't have new seismic um, approved, but uh, I support this motion. Thank you. Yep, I'm in favor of it and to recommend to, I'm in favor of recommending it to the board. Trustee Zeng, uh, Trustee Chen, comments? Uh, favor to move the motion forward. Thank you. Okay, so I, I also vote to, to move this motion forward. So um, I'll go back to the board with the recommendation of the facilities planning committee uh, in support of this motion. There's no discussion items. Uh, so we'll move to section number three, information items. We have a report from the Director of Educational Planning, uh, John Dawson, and Communications Manager, Manager Gianna Chow. I will pass it along to you, Gianna. Hi, everyone. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so I am here to walk you through the engagement results from the QEA surplus consideration engagement process. Next slide, please. 
Selling or leasing VSV property is governed by the School Act and Board Policy 20. As per the policy and the School Act, the Board must first decide to surplus the site before exploring alternative land use possibilities, including uh, sale or long-term lease of the site. Next slide. As per the policy, there are specific engagement requirements. Uh, the board via district staff is required to engage with stakeholders, local governments, community organizations, and or the public as it reviews the surplus consideration. As per the policy, the engagement must consider future enrollment growth as well as alternative community use. The engagement must also provide key community members a fair opportunity for input and feedback to respond to the board's surplus consideration. Next slide. So the district follows best practices as outlined by the International Association of Public Participation, otherwise known as IAP2. Um, for these following engagement activities, they would uh, rest on the consult and inform level of the spectrum. The goal of the engagement was to provide an opportunity as outlined in the board policy for those interested and impacted by the Q8 site proposal to share their feedback. Interested parties included the three host nations, stakeholders, civic agencies, the QEA school community, and those near the QEA school site, as well as neighborhood associations near QEA. The activities here were planned to achieve the goal. Um, I'll get into more details about each activity later. Uh, I do want to make special note of the special delegation at the uh, end over here on the on the slide, and that was added uh, based on community feedback where they wanted additional opportunity to speak directly to the board. Next slide, please. Communications plays a key role in ensuring an engaged audience. The communications goal for this public engagement process was to provide community members, interested and affected parties, and the three host nations the information they need to meaningfully engage in the process. To help achieve this, we launched a project website to act as a resource hub and to also remain transparent. We also proactively shared the information with the community every step of the way, as you can see from the various letters on here. Next slide, please. So this is the timeline from um, board activities to engagement opportunities and communication notifications. Um, I recognize it is hard to read, so I'll be going into each kind of category. Next slide, please. The surplus consideration can only occur um, if a school is uh, decided to be closed by the board and that happened last year in June. The board then approved the commencement of the engagement process last November. Fast track to last Friday where the engagement report was published um, as part of this uh, agenda package. And then today we have the facilities planning committee um, and the delegation which is happening right after this. Then the board will make their decision next Monday on April 11th. Next slide, please. Next slide again. In terms of engagement, uh, these were the planned engagement opportunities. As you can see, there are several opportunities for engagement and I'll get into the results in a little bit. Next slide. Next slide again. Um, this really just showcases we communicated to the community members every step of the way whenever we had an update on the project. Um, but in total, you can see it is a very comprehensive process which we followed as per board policy. Next slide. So I'm going to be taking you through each engagement activity and walking you through the engagement results. Um, we'll start with focused discussions with the three host nations. Uh, the format of it was first we started with the staff presentation, which outlined an overview of the timeline engagement process as well as the surplus declaration process. 
Then we provided district and local demographic and enrollment information, as well as how the district would accommodate potential future long-term enrollment growth, specifically near the west side of Vancouver and uh, near the UBC area. Uh, in addition, given CSF's interest in the QE8 site for uh, public education programming, which we also made clear during the engagement uh, closure process, uh, we advise that the district's recommendation was to dispose the site to the Francophone public school site, um, either through sale or long-term lease. Majority of the time was actually spent discussing the three dialogue questions, which we talked about or if there were any challenges or opportunities that the district has yet to identify. Um, and if the board approved the surplus declaration, uh, are there other alternative community uses the board should consider other than CSF? And then lastly, would you recommend a sale or long-term lease of the site? Next slide, please. For the engagement results, um, for Musqueam Nation, we uh, they provided us their feedback. However, they asked for their feedback not to be publicized. Instead, they requested time to go back to their community, um, their band and council to gather further feedback. Uh, we have not received further feedback from, from the nation. For Squamish, uh, they asked clarifying questions about the ownership, uh, uh, the history of the land, um, as well as community feedback received thus far and the district's enrollment forecasts. In terms of overall feedback, representatives mainly expressed the need to return the land back to stakeholders if the site were to be declared surplus. And for Salewood Tooth, we did not uh, get a response from our engagement request, which was sent in the middle of January. Next slide. We met with stakeholders on February 15th, many of you which also participated in the workshop. Um, we had the same format, so we shared the same staff presentation as we did with the three host nations. Um, and then we asked the same dialogue questions. Next slide. What we've heard from stakeholders um, in terms of alternative community use, uh, we heard that they wanted to see the site be used for outdoor education given its close proximity to Camas and Bog. We also heard uh, the maybe potential use of the site for mixed use purposes such as community centers, daycares or VSB housing. Uh, they also wanted to look at other options to meet CSF's needs, which is they're looking at a school, the west side of Vancouver, west of Main Street, um, the potential of looking at the Prince of Wales site and if there's extra space to uh, house CSF there. They also uh, voice that there's strong support for long-term lease over sale of the land. Um, and then there were some who uh, said that they would like to see the land return back to rights holders. Next slide. For civic agencies, we, we reached out to um, the City of Vancouver, Park Board, BC Housing, and Vancouver Coastal Health. Um, we believe that these were the civic agencies who could potentially be interested in the surplus declaration. An email was sent on February 15th, and in terms of results, next slide, please. Uh, all in all, the, the replies from the four agencies received, they each noted that they had no objection to the declaration of the land surplus, being surplused. Um, City of Vancouver, they said they were in support of a sale, selling or leasing the land to CSF and reinvesting it to uh, put back into school infrastructure. The Park Board had no concerns with the potential disposition to CSF. Uh, BC Housing had no interest in pursuing the site and Vancouver Coastal Health um, said that they would, uh, they want to see the land continue to benefit the health and development of children, but had no objection to disposing it uh, to CSF. Next slide, please. Uh, 
We then had a virtual information session, I should say two virtual information session for community members. So that included um, school communities near the QEA site, as well as uh, neighborhood associations that were identified during the closure proce process that would be interested uh, in the surplus process as well. Uh, the same presentation was used or uh, was shared with with this group as was the same one that was used for the stakeholders and the three host nations. Um, the cameras and microphones were turned off to ensure there was no lag in the virtual session and participants were able to submit questions in advance via the engage email or they could submit questions through the chat feature um, in the team's chat. In total, 107 registered for this, uh, 35 actually attended and we received 135 questions. We themed and moderated the questions to ensure they would be addressed with the most common questions being addressed first. Um, I'd also like to note that we added a second session based on um, a technical difficulty in accessing the first session experienced by some community members. Uh, we heard their feedback and we decided to add on a second session, which was on March 8th. Next slide, please. Um, the main clarifying questions that emerged, uh, there are four main themes. One was the accuracy of VSB enrollment data. The next was the need to preserve the site for future use. And then the demand for French immersion in the area, although that topic was addressed during the closure process and it wasn't really part of the surplus consideration. It was something that we saw come up regularly as a clarifying question. Um, and in general, there was frustration over the engagement process and seismic safety concerns about Jules Cornell. Uh, no one who attended the session was in support of the surplus consideration. Participants expressed the desire to keep QEA open, and there was also a strong desire to keep VSB land in the hands of the public. Next slide. We also had a survey developed uh, where participants, any, any member of the public could complete. Um, it was available for two weeks from February 23rd to March 9th. It was promoted to the community members, so school communities and neighborhood associations near QEA, and there were also reminder letters sent too. Out of the, the almost 8,300 emails sent, 286 unique survey responses were received. That's about a 3% response rate. Next slide. The top three demographic groups that uh, completed the survey were family members of a QEA student um, near QEA or um, at QEA. Uh, the second was family members of a student in other VSB schools. And then the third were community members of the Dunbar, West Point Gray, UBC or Arbutus Ridge area. Um, each participant could check one or more of the following. So there might be some crossover in, in this analysis. Most of the respondents did not attend a virtual information session. 13% of those who attended an information session also completed the survey. Next slide. The survey then asked participants to identify priorities for board consideration if the site was declared surplus. Um, the top three, top four themes that came out was uh, the future population growth in the district, fiscal responsibility, population growth in high density areas, and the ability to generate capital funds uh, were identified as high priorities. Next slide, please. Responses to the question on whether the QEA site should be declared as surplus was closely split. There was a combined 46.4% in support and 48.2% opposed to the surplus consideration. Next slide. We then asked uh, if the board were to decide to surplus the site, which alternative community use would you support? Majority indicated support for disposition to CSF. Next slide. 
In terms of lease or sale, similar to other engagement activities, majority of respondents indicated support for the long-term lease over sale of the land. Next slide. We then ask questions about the engagement um, and overall evaluation of the process. Uh, majority agreed that the engagement was valuable. A combined 88% understood the land disp disposal process. A combined 86% said the survey was easy to participate in. And then a combined 97.1% appreciated the opportunity to provide input. Next slide. There was also an opportunity to um, write in open text um, if the survey didn't address something that a uh, fe feedback that participants wish to provide. Um, in response to the optional open text question, 92 written comments were received. Of those, the top three themes that emerged was uh, were opposition to declare the site as surplus, concerns about district enrollment data uh, and forecasting and preference for lease over sale of the site. Preference for lease over sale of the site. Next slide. There was then an opportunity uh, to submit email feedback as open written feedback to the board. Uh, email feedback was open from January 18th to March 27th. So about a month and a half time frame. Um, in that submission period, we received a small number of emails. A total of 11 emails were received. The themes uh, included preference for lease over sale, opposition to surplus, engagement process concerns, and concerns over accuracy of enrollment forecasts. So um, that kind of concludes the engagement findings. I would say overall you saw uh, many of the same themes appear through the different engagement activities. Um, there were many opportunities to provide feedback um, and there is a more fulsome report attached in this agenda package. Are there any questions? Deepak, Vic, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so we'll start off. Maybe um, the best thing to do is, can we start off with the civic engagement slide? You're going to have to go back, Sarah. Then the next one, the uh, civic engagement slide that had the four civic agencies and their feedback summary. Yeah, perfect. Um, so through the chair to um, uh, Jana, um, I believe that the summary for the Vancouver Coastal Health was probably um, um, not summarized uh, in the way that most people would view it, even as it's written. Um, the part where it says advised the VSB to consider walkability and proximity to green space in future educational facilities is uh, really important and that was not emphasized at all um, in the overview right now. And I wanted to, you know, place huge emphasis on this is that in the um, all of the feedback that we've got back from the VSB on strategies that to deal with future enrollment growth possibilities has been predicated on, well, if there's growth, then we'll manage it. Potentially we could have some land in Jericho lands or you know, the city could provide land in other places um, because the city does care about social infrastructure. So that's what we heard. But when you really view this, advised VSB to consider walkability and proximity to green space in future educational facilities, this has a lot of heart and meaning to families and to neighborhoods. Um, to make complete communities, this speaks to the value of the neighborhood school. 
and the value of neighborhood school land, especially when it comes to where um, QEA is located. It's located in what today is called the Dunbar Village, but what's identified in the Vancouver plan as the Dunbar Neighborhood Center. Um, there's even, you know, planners specking out buildings um, on the corner of Dunbar and 41st to have stations like rapid transit stations. So we are talking about some serious density and population coming to Vancouver. And I wanted to really reflect on this slide and the importance of the neighborhood school when it comes to low carbon, healthy, sustainable, walkable, complete communities that we need in our more dense future. So I wanted to make sure that's reflected and I wanted to emphasize that. While we're on this slide, um, may I ask a question? Go ahead. Thank you. So um, on the city of Vancouver, um, I wanted to know whether information, um, enrollment forecasting, uh, differentials by the VSB and by the ministry were disclosed to the city of Vancouver and did the city of Vancouver know that the difference is about 15,000 students, which is very significant when you're only talking about 50,000 students in the district altogether. And the translation of that is that the Vancouver School Board forecast for the next decade calls for 5,000 fewer students than today. Yet the ministry forecast for the next decade calls for 10,000 more students. So was that information disclosed to the city of Vancouver when they made their, their assessment? I will refer to um, Mr. Dawson comment. Thank you, through the chair. Um, first, I'd like to correct a couple of points. The current ministry forecast, I was in discussion with the ministry about this yesterday, projects an increase of about 5,000 students um, for the next 10 years. So they're not forecasting an increase of 10,000. And as Mr. Canna, the committee knows, our current forecast is more negative than that. And as also has been stated at this uh, committee many times, there's a high level of uncertainty in both those, higher level than normal uncertainty in both those forecasts, which the ministry also freely admits. So uh, the discrepancy is not, as Mr. Cannon ind indicates, um, 15,000 students. Uh, and with respect to future capital planning, um, we are working uh, with the city directly on the Jericho lands. And as indicated in the surplus declaration report, we have a land land available at UBC. Uh, we have land available at Fraser Lands. We've successfully acquired land in the past for schools as needed. So in the opinion of staff, this site is surplus the needs of the district. And if, if it is finally disposed of to the CSF, it will still be a public education site where hopefully we retain some of the values that we all value in public education. Thank you for that. Uh, Deepak Vic, another question? Uh, well, a follow up. So um, it's good news because um, our latest information um, did not know that the difference now is 10,000. But then the question still has to be asked if there's a 10,000 difference on 50,000 students, that's still very significant. And then did the city of Vancouver know about this difference when they made their assessment? Projections from both ministry, again, correct me if I'm wrong, both ministry and, and the school district are made uh, are, are made public to um, to the city of Vancouver and to the public. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Vic. Um, I, I don't think they're made available to the public and that, that there's no document from the VSP that says that there's a 10,000 difference. This is all brand new information right now. Mr. Dawson, comment, uh, Secretary Treasurer. Before before we go on, I think it's fair, Mr. Kana, to, to you're referring to information you you provided in a document to me at quarter 
after four today. So the rest of the committee has, is not privy to some of the information that you're providing. So I just want to point that out. I mean, I will distribute what you have to the committee, yes, but just to be, just so everybody's aware, we're, we're, we're not, um, you're not aware of some of the documentation that was support, that was supported. Mr. Connor. Um, through the chair, back to uh, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, there's nothing in the documentation that I provided that I'm stating right now. We're providing dynamic feedback based on the commentary that Mr. Dawson just said, which is brand new information. If the difference is now 10,000 and not 15,000, which it was prior to us knowing until right now. So this is brand new information. If the difference is 10,000, don't you think the city should know that there's a difference and then be able to make a new opinion if they did not know that information in the past? Mr. Dawson. Yeah, through the chair. So the um, time horizon of all those enrollment forecasts is about 10 years. And staff took, uh, went to great lengths to acknowledge that in terms of capital planning, 10 years is an insufficient time horizon to make this kind of decision. And therefore focused on the capital planning approach to uh, surplus declaration or potential surplus declaration of the Queen Elizabeth Annex site. And once again, staff has identified the available sites in the city and the district and also identified the work being done to ensure there's available sites for future potential enrollment growth, regardless of the ministry or the or the uh, baseline forecast from the district. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from those who have not spoke yet? Okay, does anyone have a uh, trustee ready? Thanks, Chair, and thanks for the presentation um, again <clears throat> on the surplus uh, report. So um, I just had a question around um, like the context of the engagement and the language that was used. So were participants made aware of like what we mean by disposal um, versus like declared surplus? And I'm just noticing that they're kind of used interchangeably. So just wondering to what degree the information about that was shared. And then I have some follow up. Uh, as part of the staff presentation, we walk through the disposal process, which we're, we said um, a, a, the site needs to be decided, um, the board needs to decide if the site is surplus before looking at disposition of the site, either through sale or long-term lease. The presentation is also available on the project website and a recording of the staff presentation is available on the website as well. Trustee Reddy. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. So just in terms of clarification for me, it's about the sequence of the decision making that was um, shared with participants. Um, and then in the section of the report that talks about the opposition to the, declare, the declaration of surplus, it says that 50% support long-term lease and 37% support no disposal. I'm guessing participants had to choose one option out of those questions. So either long term lease disposal or no sale. Um, and it's just not clear to me that if you do need to have a disposal before you can declare a lease. So just like how should we interpret those results? So if 50% say yes to a long term lease and 37% say no to disposal, but you need to dispose in order to go into a long term lease. Um, through the chair, Trustee Reddy, are you uh, referring to survey results under lease or sale? Perhaps, Sarah, you can move back to the survey results slide, which is four slides back. Is this what you were referring to? So the, the question asked um, to participants was, would you recommend either long-term lease or sale, or you don't support the disposal process at all? Thanks so much to the chair. So you would be able to choose one of those? One of the three, yes. Got it, okay, thank you. Additional questions? Vic Khanna. Thank you, chair. Um, so on, on back on the starting at the top. Um, so one of the first questions that we had was, um, is the VSB still planning on deciding 
the qa surplus matter on april eleventh knowing that the feedback from the host nations is incomplete um through the chair uh, we gave the three nations um, a long time, a, a month and a half since the middle of January to respond. Um, out of the three nations, two nations responded to our engagement requests. Um, we have uh, feedback from Squamish Nation and Musqueam Nation. We followed up twice to ask for their feedback before we finalized the report and it had to be published. Go ahead, Vic. So in, in, in our uh, written questions, there'll be a few more um, questions on that topic uh, that we can answer later. So moving on to the next question. Um, we parents proposed a you know triple win solution and we proposed that at the facilities planning committee meeting on January 18th. And we want to know what anybody thinks about that. You know, it's a good idea to share some of our very large school sites and help solve the situation that everybody finds themselves in where we need to provide the CSF, our counterpart Francophone school district with a modern safe school. So by sharing our bigger land, we can accomplish that while we also attain ourselves a safe modern school so i see lots of wins there and did anybody have anything to say about that i think um i think vic is referring to um again you don't have it but he's referring to um construction of a CSF school on um, in association with our sites at Prince of Wales and Air Lord. Is that correct? That's correct, but everyone's had it. Everyone's had it since January 18th. This committee's had it since the last committee meeting. This is not new information. We would love some feedback on this. Uh, David Nelson, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so the chair, um, with, with all due respect, I think that the conversation tonight is to seek feedback on the surplus engagement report uh, before the committee. The decision as to whether or not this site is surplus to the educational needs is separate of the um, proposal that Vic is putting forward. I understand that it's around, they're putting forward a proposal around other options for CSF. But really, the decision the board is asked to make at this point in time is not the disposal decision. It's the decision as to whether or not this site and lands are surplus to the educational needs of the district. Thank you for that clarification. Deepak, Vic, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, w with respect um, and with really due respect, this is directly part of the agenda. This is stakeholder engagement workshop, bullet point number three, um, explore other options to meet CSF's needs for a school site on the west side of Vancouver, end quote. This is on agenda. Superintendent McGregor. So thank you for that. What I can say, um, we heard um, the ideas. There's been a lot of conversation over many years around the matter with CSF. And ultimately, CSF um, makes their own decisions um, about what they are looking for. So I, I don't, I can't speak for what CSF um, specifically thinks perhaps about the proposal that you brought forward. Um, but I, that is the matter, that is the situation that we're in. Um, I don't know if there's any other commentary around the table around what you're proposing, but just for your awareness, that is um, the circumstance that we, we are in. Thank you. Are there any comments on the surplus consideration engagement report uh, for Gianna Chow at this time.
Thank you very much, Jana. Uh, Vic, go ahead. Thank you. Um, in the survey um, summary, and you know, there was um, there was a lot of comments among those in support of the closure. This goes back to the school closure part for financial reasons, and then this goes to the survey in this part about financial reasons. So, when it comes to the financial reasons to dispose QEA. Well, have we explored all other financial considerations? Because it definitely seems that most of the agreement by the people who are in support of disposing QEA is for financial reasons. So then it definitely begs to ask the question, well then, what are the other options for financial reasons? Where can we attain money? Where can we generate revenue? For example, Vancouver is the only school district in the province that's not able due to the Vancouver Charter to charge a school site acquisition charge, which can, which can generate significant revenue because there's lots of development going on in Vancouver. Sorry, I, just, to, just to clarify, is this about the engagement report? Yes, so okay. the financial considerations is the reason why people are saying that they're in support of disposing QEA. So then it's logical to say, well, why don't we look at other financial considerations and can we increase revenue? Is there something else that would not take away that walkable local proximity of future facilities for neighborhood kids in a more densely populated Dunbar neighborhood center? So this is where, you know, what are the other financial things we can, we're actually doing our budget right now. And I think there's gonna be a lot of talk about, you know, where we can do better for education through optimization of, of financial. And part of all that is, well, let's go back to a big, big question. Have we got our enrollment right? Maybe we're gonna get more money because our enrollment's gonna go up. And maybe we should not be disposing land if our enrollment's going up. Do you have a question for Gianna about the engagement report and the, the questions around financing on the engagement report? Sorry, maybe I'm, I'm misunderstanding. Did you have a question regarding? <laughs> yeah, so in the financial reasons, it just seems Okay, maybe um, uh, to, to clarify uh, through the chair, um, I think you're referring to one of the priorities that we ask participants to identify, which is uh, to be fiscally responsible and ensure funding is balanced among students throughout the district. So that wasn't directly correlated for in support of the disposition process. Rather, that should be that is a priority identified for the board to consider as they look at the surplus consideration. Okay. Any questions from those who haven't spoke yet? Any trustees, comments, questions? Vic, go ahead. <laughs> so um, if we view the, the, the virtual info sessions, um, the Q&A was really important learning in both those workshops. And the Q&A has not been made available publicly. Is it possible to make the Q&A from both workshops made available publicly? A specific reason for this, and a very specific reason, is in the Q&A and also at the stakeholder workshop, the question was asked, why is a ministry's forecast not accurate? And the answer was given, the ministry's forecast uses census data, and therefore that's part of the reason why it's not accurate. I've personally spoken with the ministry, and they say they do not use census data in their new forecasting methodology that is post. November 2019 when the VSB did their data validation 
self-study. So the ask here is, is it possible to have an independent third party validate the data and solve this issue before we make decisions on surplus? So this goes to, you know, I don't think there's going to be an answer on this, so let me conclude my feedback. You know, one, please, if the, if, if there's something hanging with our host nations and we have not got a response back, but somebody said they're going to respond back, it's incomplete. Let's please, let's, let's respect that and let's defer the decision until conversations are complete with the host nations. Number two, I think we banged this enrollment drum very, very much as we can. We know there's a difference. There's new information today that it's a 10,000 student difference. That's way better than a 15,000 student difference. So we're making progress. But the ask there is, you know, well, let's have some third party come in and arbitrate and figure out this enrollment issue. Finally, let's not defer one thing. Let's not defer creative thinking. Let's not defer solutions. If parents, a volunteer group can come up with a triple win, think what professionals can come up with, right? Let's really put our heads together on this and let's think about what we can do to solve the CSF problem, solve the VSB problem, solve the entire problem in Vancouver, which is unique. Vancouver is very unique. We have now a different kind. We're not going to go into it, but there's a lot of data that says Vancouver is unique. There's drivers out there of housing, immigration, independent schools being full that indicate that Vancouver School Board student enrollment is going to grow. Would you like a comment on your first point about enrollment or are you okay with, with um, moving? I'm absolutely okay with any comments that anybody can provide. <laughs> okay, I would just like Mr. Dawson to make a comment on, uh, on, on what you had just said there. Thank you, through the chair. So it's, it's important that the committee work from a, a factual basis. And, um, and as I was the supplier of the answer that referenced census data, I'm responding to that part of the comments. Uh, the ministry does use BC stats data in their enrollment forecasting. There's other components they consider as well, but I verified yesterday with my contact at the ministry, the use of BC stats data. Uh, the BC stats data they're using right now is from 2016 because they have not yet implemented the 2021 census data. And so I, I think it's important to remind the committee that we're forecasting on an annual basis, our baseline forecast, and then we're updating our forecast based on actual enrollment statistics right now on a weekly basis. So, um, and to further just, you know, speaking of banging the drum, remind the committee one more time that whether or not the ministry's forecast proves to be more accurate, which is not in the past, but, you know, it's a forecast. So we have to have some humility that we are once again talking about capital planning over a time horizon of more than 25 years. And that's why we're talking about land asset management here, not enrollment forecast discrepancies. Thank you very much. Vic, do we have questions on the surplus consideration engagement report? There's no um, ability to clarify what Mr. Dawson said, Chair. I want to be mindful of of our agenda tonight and and our discussion on the Queen Elizabeth Annex surplus consideration engagement report um, that Gianna has just presented. Well, well uh, let me just say that the, the QEA surplus consideration, the primary consideration is enrollment growth according to policy 20. That is the primary consideration in policy 20 is district enrollment growth. And it is 
proven that the ministry's forecast for this year was way more accurate than the VSB's forecast. The VSB was off by 3.5 percent, 1,600 students. That is very significant. And I do not believe that it is all roses when you're off by that much. Now, we can call it the COVID bump, but maybe it's housing, maybe it's immigration, maybe it's independent schools are full. And if it's some of those factors or all of them, we're in for a lot more enrollment in the VSB. And I think that deserves consideration to give this a pause and a really critical think. Thank you for those comments. Is there anyone at the table here who would like to make a comment who has yet to speak? Mr. Uh, Mr. Nelson, David Nelson. Um, I'm not going to wage into the enrollment conversation too much other than I do, um, having been around um, for a number of years, I do want to uh, note for the committee that um, the district does uh, really um, very good work um, in terms of enrollment and enrollment projections. Um, as John has noted, we update these with actual um, bodies and actual enrollment. And uh, I think ultimately at the end of the day, the decision will be that of trustees, whether or not they have confidence um, in staff and in staff enrollment projections. Um, I do, though, really just want to note um, and thank and acknowledge um, both Gianna and John um, for uh, really leading and facilitating a very um, uh, uh, robust uh, engagement process for the information of the board. Um, and I know that it will be the decision of uh, the board on the 11th um, as to whether or not they determine the site surplus to district needs. So, but thank you to John and Gianna for your work. Thank you, Deputy Superintendent. Okay, we will move on. Um, if, if, uh, thank you, Gianna, very much. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Moving to information item requests. Moving to uh, information item requests, item number four. Oh, we have no previous information requests. Uh, committee members may request by email to the chair of the committee, myself, following uh, follow-up information on previously discussed items and or suggest possible topics for future committee meeting agendas. All requests for future agenda items will be considered by myself and vice chair at weekly agenda setting meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much to uh, Gianna and John. Uh, and thank you very much for, for showing up tonight and for being here with us. Um, if uh, there's no objections, we will adjourn at uh, 1803 and I will see everyone at the next meeting on May the 17th. Thank you very much.